Hello everybody. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to create a WP34S based on an HP 30B. The first thing you need is an HP 30B. I've already opened up the blister pack here and tested the calculator to verify that the keyboard works. Not all of these have good keyboards, so we want to make sure we have a good one for starters. So let's take the calculator out of the blister pack, set that aside. We now want to open up the calculator so that we can install the clock crystal. The first step to opening the calculator is taking the back off. So we take the back off. This exposes three screws plus two underneath the rubber. Let's take a small screwdriver, remove these three screws. Now we remove the two behind the rubber foot, so let's just use the fingernail, peel it back a tiny bit, unscrew this screw, and unscrew this screw. We don't need to remove the batteries because they will fall out on their own. Now we need to open the calculator, splitting these two pieces apart. It's actually much simpler than it looks, you don't need any special tools. Just use your, fingernail, your fingers. So hold the calculator like this. We're first going to release this side. What we'll do is we'll hold it here and use your thumbs to push like this. Don't worry, you won't break it if you don't push too hard. See now we just released these clips here. We'll do the same thing up here at the top. The same thing on the other side. There we go. Now they are apart. You can now see the inside, the circuit board of the calculator. Right here is where we are going to put the clock crystal and the two capacitors. Let's just set this aside and get ready to start soldering. I'll flip it around to make it a little bit easier to work with. I'll zoom in too so you can see this a bit better. Okay, to solder, let's first turn on the soldering iron. Let's take a couple seconds for that to get warm. Add a little bit of flux. Flux is your friend. Without flux, soldering is no fun at all. We need a couple capacitors. And we also need a clock crystal grab one of these. This clock crystal is a 32 kilohertz crystal. Put that back. And our capacitors, they're 18 picofarads. Our, our soldering iron is warmed up I'm using my little tiny tweezers here. Some solder. I always put a little bit of solder on the iron first. It makes it a lot easier with the surface mount stuff. Hold it in place with one hand and try not to block your view here. Just touch it. Same thing, we'll do the next crystal, or the next capacitor. Here we go. Rotate it 180 degrees. Here we go. Get a little bit more solder. Do this one. There we go. I'll put a little bit on these pads here for the crystal. There we go. We take the clock crystal, hold it in place, solder, solder. Inspect it perhaps with a magnifying glass just to make sure that everything looks good. That all your connections, there's nothing loose. Looks good to me. Let's clean up the flux from this because if you have any leftover flux, it maybe could be harmful to it. I'll use some isopropyl alcohol. And a cotton swab here. 
Not gonna hurt anything. Just get it all over there. Clean it up really good. Okay. I'm gonna use a paper towel just to clean up some of the excess here. And just to make sure all the excess is gone. A little bit of compressed air. Should be pretty clean now. Ideally you should let it sit for a little while to completely dry, but I'm just going to try for the purpose of this video to avoid stopping and starting it uh, to see if this works right away. So put the calculator back together. Well, first let's make sure it turns on. It should still turn on. I'll hold a battery in here. It does. Let's put the calculator back together. I'll zoom out a bit so you can see that some more. There we go. Get everything aligned right snap it together with your fingers put the batteries back in should turn on there it does good okay next step is going to be to flash the firmware and then we'll test to make sure that our soldering worked so let's turn off the calculator grab a serial cable connect to it. If you don't have one of these special cables, there are other ways of doing this, but the special cable is the best way. Unfortunately, they are limited supply and no longer available. So, snapped in the cable, go over to my computer, start the mice on the software. I have COM port selected, the firmware file selected. Let's turn on the calculator. Hold down the erase button, press reset. While still holding erase, press on, release erase, press, press reset again, press on. Now your calculator is ready to be flashed. Let's tell it send file. This will take about 24 seconds on my computer. Sending, sending. I'm using the calc XTAL full file. That is a full wipe of the calculator and has the clock crystal functionality enabled plus the, so the stopwatch pre-installed. It's done now. Let's hit reset. Press on. See if it wakes up. There we go. It's, it's awakened. I'm going to adjust this contrast a bit on minus minus minus. I think that looks better. Uh, let's test the clock crystal. Stopwatch here. There we go. Seems to be working fine. So, so far so good. Let's turn this thing off and unplug the connector. Let's put the screws back in. go. Next step is to apply the overlay. First thing I do then, just to make sure that any grease from my fingers isn't going to cause a problem with adhesion, is I'm going to clean it with some more isopropyl alcohol. Just get that all over. I'll dry it, although it dries very quickly on its own. looks good. Before we apply the overlay, something I always like to do, because the faceplate here is silver, but the overlay is black, 
Uh, I use a Sharpie uh, black marker, black permanent marker, around all of the keys just to make sure that the silver isn't quite as visible as it otherwise would be. Normally I let it dry for a while just to make sure that none of the isopropanol uh, dissolves the permanent ink, but I'll go ahead now and just see, maybe it's, maybe it's dry enough now. So, take my Sharpie, I'm just going to draw around all the keys. And you can tell, yeah, it's not quite perfect because isopropanol is not, is not completely dry yet. I'll go back and do it a second time, but it's looking a little bit faded. And that's already looking a little bit better. It's still wet up in here, it's smearing the ink. Let's go on these a few, a few more times. That's better. Much better. Let's redo a few of these. Okay. Looks good enough. It may, it looks really bad right now, but when you put the overlay on, you really can't tell. Next step is applying the overlay. I always hold it like this, which makes it a little bit easier to work with. I'm going to make sure no dust is on here. Compressed air to clean off the dust. So, first thing, most important, is to get the back, the faceplate portion on. It's the most difficult because you only get one try at it if you, if you misalign it it's not going to come up very easily and you may well waste the overlay. So we need to get it right the first time. We have to be very careful. So let's peel that off. The way I like to do it is holding it just like this over the, over the, area, the area above the enter key or what will be the, the enter key that currently says input. So Unfortunately, I'm not very steady, which makes it incredibly difficult, but if you're more steady, it'll be easier. And try to make sure it's centered and straight and everything. I think we got it. Looks, oh yeah, that looks good. Slowly let it down. Do the same thing on the top. I think that's perfect. Now that this is done, let's put the separate stickers on it. So first thing I'm going to do is the sticker that says WP34S. Let's get that on there nice and straight. There we go. And now for each of the individual key stickers. Again, I'm using the same tweezers I used for soldering. It's very handy. It's not very far apart, which makes it so I don't have to press very hard to, to squeeze it, and it picks up these stickers just perfectly. I do not advise doing this with your bare hands. The oils from your fingers will make the stickers not stick very well. Plus, it's much more difficult to align right then.
now done our first row. Continue the rest the same. Maybe I'll hold this like this so you can see it better. Being careful not to touch the keys that I've already cleaned again so as not to get oil from my fingers on them. Second row is done. Now the enter key is a little more important to align that one just right. It'll be more visible if it's crooked. There we go. Fifth row is done. Sixth row is done. And the last row is done. Now something I like to do is uh, push down on all the stickers just to make sure everything is stuck well because I didn't push very hard. So let's use my same paper towel here so I don't smudge everything. I get fingerprints everywhere. I'm pushing both on the keys and on the faceplate to make sure everything is firmly adhered. Let's get the edge right here. The sticker goes a little bit up the curve, so if you don't push down on it, it won't quite be right. Get my fingerprints off the screen there. Finally, let's put the back back on it. There we go. We now have a WP34S that's fully functional. Let's verify the version number on this one. 3.2T, T means as a clock crystal, build 3530. Good luck.